Hey everyone and welcome to a new video on this channel and we continue the series on Dapper uh, and we'll take a look at Dapper bindings today. We already looked at things like uh, state management, we looked at service to service uh, invocation and also pops up. Uh, but with Dapper bindings you can connect yeah, to all kinds of uh, systems. Uh, in this case, in this example, we'll connect to an MQTT broker and use that for input. Eh? So we'll get data from the MQTT broker into our application and then we'll send some data out. Eh? We'll use uh, an output component or a component that provides output in this case to Azure SignalR uh, in, the, uh, in the Azure uh, cloud, right? Um, yeah, maybe before I show uh, this or explain the application, let's just quickly show what the application so you can easily see uh, what I'm talking about here. So I have a small a small web app, and in this um, in this video, I will not explain the internals of the of the web app. It's a it's a simple web app that connects to SignalR uh, using web sockets and display data in real time. Um, but of course, here, what we do is we send messages to an MQTT server. Our Dapper application will pick up this message because it's using an MQTT input binding. And then the message is sent to SignalR using an output uh, binding. So when we publish this message to our MQTT broker, and I'm using Mosquito on my local machine, Mosquito and Docker, nothing, nothing special about that, I can just publish uh, a message on a topic. Now, if you don't know anything about MQTT, uh, this might all seem uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit strange. Uh, but basically, it's just a message broker, and I can send messages to what we call topics. So in this case, the signal R topic receives a message, which is "Hello from MQTT." And what happens here? The web application is uh, having a connection to signal R in the cloud uh, using web sockets. And in real time, it gets that information without refreshing uh, the browser. It gets that information and displays it. So I can publish these topics uh, one after the other. And the application is just uh, outputting them all uh, one by one. So nothing really useful uh, here. It's a demo uh, application. But you'll see how, how the system is supposed to, uh, supposed to, uh, to behave. Right? So if you look a little bit closer, how to get this to work is of course, well, first of all, we need to have an MQTT broker installed. So in my case, as I said, I'm running Mosquito uh, using the Docker, uh, the Docker uh, image from Mosquito on my local machine. Uh, for the WebSockets connection, I'm using Azure SignalR in the cloud, the free tier that's deployed in the cloud. I'm not gonna show that. That's something you can uh, look up and see how that works. The actual, web app is also running on my local machine uh, using the live server in visual studio uh, code it's just a simple index html with some javascript code and it's using view but that's not really important and yeah that web app in order to be able to successfully connect to azure signal r there's actually a function app in between uh, which gives us the signal r connection information and so forth Again, I'm not showing that. You can look on the, on the Microsoft website. The Microsoft documentation and samples for Azure SignalR have, uh, have an example, a very clear example to create a chat application. And that's the one that you should uh, look at because I modified that application a bit to not have chat functionality, but to just uh, display messages um, from, from SignalR, right? So in our case, we need Dapper or we need to instruct Dapper, hey, you have to check our MQTT server for input on a specific topic. And whenever you receive a message on that topic, you should actually send that message out to SignalR uh, using a SignalR component. So of course, we have to configure Dapper with two components. Dapper needs to know how to connect to the MQTT broker and how to connect to the SignalR service in the cloud. And then we have to provide in our application code, so we're using the JavaScript in this case, so in our app.js, we have to provide uh, routes that Dapper can use to yeah, bring us the information that we want. So in this case, when you have an MQTT component or when you have an input component, you are required to have a post route that has the name of the component 
and then Dapper can deliver the data to that poster by just executing, by just reaching out into your application and posting the, the MQTT payload, payload uh, to, this, uh, to this HTTP uh, wrap. Let's take a look uh, how that works in, in practice in the, uh, in the code. And for now, I will just uh, stop the uh, Dapper application and clear this here. And we look at the component that we need to define first. This is a MQTT component. There's nothing special about that. That's how what Dapper actually uh, expects. You can go into the documentation and there you'll find all the specs. So in this case, this is the MQTT binding spec. Uh, it requires some metadata, yeah, the URL, eh, what MQTT server to connect to, and then the MQTT topic to listen on, right? Or to send events to, because you can also use MQTT for output. If we don't do that, we only listen for events on this MQTT topic. This MQTT binding spec also supports username and password verification and should also support H uh, MQTTS. Uh, I didn't try that out, so I'm just using uh, MQTT without uh, TLS and I'm also using anonymous connectivity, so I don't have a username and password uh, to connect. Right, and that's, that, that works, that's okay. So if you look at the, uh, the MQTT uh, component, uh, what you'll see in this case is indeed my MQTT server is on localhost. That's where it's running. And the port, this is the uh, non-TLS MQTT port that we use. The topic is called SignalR. As you've seen earlier, using this uh, um, MQTT client application, which is MQTT.fx, uh, you see that we send messages to a topic called SignalR. Yeah. Right. So this is the component. Then, of course, you have to have your application. And as I said, if it's an input component, then Dapper expects that your code provides a post route that has the name of the component. So the component name is MQTTS. Well, in this case, we need a post route to MQTTS. And the actual MQTT payload, so what you send to the MQTT topic, yeah, will be in the, in the body. In this case, we expect the body to contain JSON. So we use the, the body parser, middleware, uh, to easily give us uh, the, JSON, the JSON body. And we just log out that we are inside the MQTT binding trigger. And we also log out this, this body. So you can, you can see, uh, or we log this with the body, so you can see what we have sent to the MQTT uh, topic. That's all there is to accept the MQTT message and do something with it. Yeah. Now, what do we want to do with it? We will we just want to send that request body unaltered uh, to our um, to our uh, SignalR uh, server in the cloud. How do we actually do that? Well, of course, we need to have a SignalR component first because Dapper needs to know how to connect to SignalR. Well, in this case, you need to use the SignalR specification or the spec. You'll see that the spec is something like, uh, like this. So it's uh, a component of type bindings Azure SignalR, and it just needs a connection string. That's something you'll find in the definition of the service on Azure. So there's an endpoint with, a, with an access key in it that you have to provide to the component. And yeah, it says the hub is optional, but in my case, it's not optional. I have to provide a hub name. Uh, the hub name that I'm using here is Dapper. My client application is also listening um, for incoming messages for that hub name. So they have to match. I'm not showing the client app, but in the client app, there is something that says, hey, I want to actually uh, listen for messages coming from the hub called Dapper, right? So we, we need to specify in this case, we need to specify that we use the, 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 Dapper, uh, the Dapper hub. Uh, so here you see indeed the connection string. This is the endpoint uh, for now. Uh, and that's the, uh, the value of the hub, that's Dapper. That's okay, that's fine. The question of course is how do we actually send the data to our SignalR uh, endpoint in the cloud? Well, there are basically two ways of doing that. And the normal way would be that you that you post this to a URL that Dapper provides, just have you as, have, as you have seen with state management and so on. So you would go to something like, and I'm just typing it here just to see what kind of URL it is. So 
So you would go to something like HTTP uh, localhost. You would use the Dapper port. That's the, the, the port that Dapper is listening on in your sidecar or on your local machine. You would use v1.0 like in the other ones, but now you would use bindings. And then the name of the binding, in my case, the name of the binding is SignalR. So you would post to this URL and the payload, of course, uh, should be formatted properly so that, uh, that the SignalR uh, component can, can bring that, that data uh, to, to SignalR. You can find how that is done in the documentation, but I'm using a little bit of another trick. Well, it's not really a trick, it's just how it, how it uh, can work. Um, what Dapper provides is that if you're in the handler, for example, for an input, like in this case, the handler for the MQTT input, uh, and you construct the message or the data you want to send to the output, uh, you can actually use a response body. So in this case, we do a response and we send also a response body with our response and we send 200 OK in this case. And if the response body is formatted like this, so you have a two and then the name of a component, uh, and then in data, the actual data you want to send to the component, Dapper will take care of that and indeed send that to the SignalR output. Yeah? So that's something which is, which is possible uh, with, uh, with, uh, with Dapper here. Of course, the message still has to be constructed. Yeah, this message is a little bit specific to what the uh, output, in this case, the SignalR output expects. So it expects a JSON uh, structure with a target uh, field. The target field contains, uh, let's say, the name um, that we listen on in our client application. So in the client application, there's an event handler uh, that actually looks for new message events. So new message is not something specific to a signal R. It's something that I decide what will be the event handler, what type of messages that uh, we need to listen to. So just new message because I, I couldn't find any other more interesting name. And then arguments should be then what you sent um, um, uh, via that for that message type, right? So in this case, arguments is just the request uh, body. So clear this message JSON structure here will be sent to the SignalR output component. And that's actually all that is required. So we take the input using this post route here. Dapper sends it uh, via a, a post route to our MQTTS uh, route. There we grab the payload uh, out of the request body. And then we just send that payload, payload uh, to our SignalR output component, again, using this yeah, Dapper specific thing, when Dapper sees that there's a response body, it can use the response body if it's properly formatted to send it out to that output. So this is all that is required to grab data from MQTT and to bring it to SignalR. A couple of lines of code, of course, no error handling here and so on. Uh, so it's kind of brittle, but still, uh, this is the basic thing that you need to, uh, to get this functionality uh, working. Let's now start this application. This is the same as before. So Dapper run, you give it an app ID and an app port. The app port is required because as I said, Dapper needs to do a post request to an MQTTS handler. So it needs the port uh, that, uh, uh, that that application listens on. And then we specify the components path. So the path where all our Dapper components uh, should live. In this case, that's the dot slash components folder. That's the one that you see here. If you don't specify that folder, by the way, uh, you will have this in uh, this one here. So if you go to your home folder, you go to dot dapper, you go to components, uh, this folder can will normally uh, or can also have your components. So if you want to have system wide components, you can put them in there for now or now in this case, it's empty. Uh, but uh, you could also put your components there. Now for a specific application, I think it's easier that you put the components into a separate folder, but that's something uh, yeah, for local development that makes things a little bit a little bit easier. Let's delete this and let's check if our Dapper application uh, works. So let's do Dapper, Dapper run. And like always, you get logging from Dapper, but also the, 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 log, the logs from your app will appear here as well. Now, before we uh, send some data and, and look at the logs, uh, take a look at what Dapper is all doing. First of all, here you can see that Dapper finds your components. So when you see problems like, okay, it's not working, my component. Yeah, first question is, is your component properly found? 
uh, check the logs and see if Dapper found your components. And in this case, indeed, he found a component called SignalR and he found a component called EmptyTTS. But that doesn't mean that everything is working properly. You also have to look a little bit further for successful inits. So in this case, you see a successful init for the output binding MQTTS, but also for the input binding MQTTS. In case you made some mistakes, for example, in the component spec, you forgot to have some mandatory parameters or the connectivity is not working. For example, the, com the component cannot connect to your MQTT server for whatever reason. Errors will appear here, allowing you to correct uh, to correct that error. So look for both the component that's found properly and then look for successful inits for both your yeah, input and output bindings uh, of your component. In my case, that all seem to have worked properly. So again, this means that if I go to my application, I refresh this, so I only see the new messages uh, appearing and I send a, a new message. And by the way, he's still loading, so this one will not work. It's, it's real time, of course. So uh, when we publish this one, there you see that the hello from MQTT appears. If we're going back to the application, I'm clearly seeing I'm in the MQTT binding trigger and the request body indeed contains the actual payload that we have sent to the MQTT topic. Yeah, it's as simple as that. That's how it works. So you have seen how the Dapper bindings uh, work uh, using two example bindings or two example components, the MQTT component and the SignalR component. And just remember, for an input, input, uh, input binding, you have to provide a post handler with the name of the uh, of the uh, of the component, and that that way Dapper can reach out into your application and send you the payload that you're interested in. And we have used uh, this trick that Dapper uh, provides, functionality that Dapper uh, provides, that allows us to send output to, in this case, a SignalR component using uh, a response body that's properly formatted, as you have seen in uh, the code. Good, I hope you like this, and I hope uh, that you uh, see what you can do with yeah, a couple of these, uh, of these, uh, of these bindings. Um, take care. See you next time. Bye-bye.